and I'm just going to just move straight. I wanted to design uh, a slide, but I felt that perhaps if we want to change the terrain, we will still go back to the the old ways of just using a web document or presentations. Um, I hope you can all see my screen. So I want to thank NatCare Africa for this webinar of which you have invited me to present. I am John Samega Shibiglu, the president of the Senate of Youth Impact Parliament, Ghana, of Youth Impact Movement. Um, to present on informed voting for a better future, which should be a guide to any of you listening to me to choosing the right political party. And this is all based on your team for today's webinar, which is promoting peaceful elections, the responsibility of the youth. I don't really know, but if I really want to investigate to know your political affiliations, I'm sure 80% of you would be aligned to political parties in Ghana. Unless we have very neutral people here. If you are not aligned to any political party, raise your hand so that I know you are the new soul I'm coming to speak to. Oh, wow. I see. No problem. So I'm hopeful that um, the floating voters who are not aligned with any political party will be able to choose a political party after my presentation. However, for those of you who are already affiliated to a political party, no problem. Perhaps after my presentation, you might have a change of mind and then go for, for any other one. So in starting my presentation is just very simple. Informed voting is all talking about you having the right reasons to vote. And for you to be properly informed is to know who you are voting for, when you are voting, and the benefits that you would enjoy after voting for anyone of your choice. As a matter of fact, if you don't vote well, or you don't vote as an informed person, you end up choosing poor leaders for us. A lot of countries suffer from this particular thing. It could be possible that the people are voting not based on policies, but it is because they are being influenced by gifts or monetization of politics. Or in other words, I know this man, I speak to him, so I'm going to vote for him. Just the fact that he knows you or you, you have had an encounter with him, you are going to vote for him, but not based on his competencies and qualities. So it is important that we as youth, enlightened youth or Gen Z youth, we should not embarrass ourselves by being put soldiers to vote for parties because of silly reasons, if I may say. But you are voting for them because you believe that when these people come into power, they would take the right decisions and improve our living, or should I say quality of living. Now, in choosing a political party, you first need to understand the political parties. In Ghana, for instance, we actually have a lot of political parties. But in registering for these 2024 elections, only few parties were able to get themselves on the presidential ballot paper. And I think they are around eight or nine, if I'm, if I'm right. And then the others are independent candidates. Regardless, some of the independent candidates were unable to register their political parties. The formation of political parties in Ghana is actually guided by an act. I don't know which particular act is that. But I'm aware that if you want to register a political party, you need to have representatives in every single constituency and possibly the electoral areas within the Republic. And it is very stressful registering a political party. And on in most occasions, people who end up joining political
Hello? I hope I can be heard. Okay. Yes, please. Did I lose connection along the line? You did. You you, did, and right? you yeah. wanted to you wanted to explain to us why certain people will join certain political parties. Oh, okay. Then at least I'm back on. Okay. So I was talking about understanding the political parties. And I was saying that apart from the two main political parties that we know that it's very likely that any of them will win elections. But the other parties, the people who are part of them are citizens that are disgruntled about the achievements and track records of either the NDC or the MPP. They do not want to associate themselves with any of these two parties. So they go forth to join uh, that party. But as a matter of fact, in Ghana, um, we are more or less like a de facto two-party system. Um, whether you might like it or not, just being plain with you, is it not going to be NDC or MPP? However, do not give hope. There are some new forces that are coming around that could change the terrain. I'm not God. Now, as I'm, as I'm trying to explain to you, you need to know the political party that you want to join. They are ideologies. They are manifestos. They are track records. The kind of people that lead such a party. They are track record with respect to accountability and performance when they are being given power. It's very important because when you are seen to be part of a political party, whatsoever tag that goes with members of that party will be used against you or be used for you. So in the case that, um, let's just go to the United States of America. You are part of the Democrats. So they will call you a Democrat. Whether you have held a position or you have not held any position there, you will be called a Democrat. If you are part of the Republican Party, you will also be called a Republican. It doesn't really matter whether you hold a position or not. Even being part of political parties, you have different levels. You are either just a voter or you are a sympathizer or a supporter or you are an executive. But even apart from the executive, we have people who are who also hold positions as government officials from that political party. So these are the five levels of membership. Just to explain to you, just a voter is, you don't really align with the party. Perhaps you might be disgruntled, but you just, on that day of voting, you went and you casted your votes for them. So you are just merely a voter for that party. If you are a sympathizer, a sympathizer is more or less like, he's not, he does not hold a membership card of that party, but he is for that party. When it is time to vote, he'll vote, but he might not necessarily campaign. That is a sympathizer of a political party. The next type of um, person is a supporter. A supporter is also not a member a registered member of that political party, but he supports the party in terms of campaigning, preaching their news, preaching their manifesto, and then trying to convince people to join. So he does not hold a membership card as a registered member of the party, but he supports that party. So you are then called a supporter of that political party. The next level is, I could, okay, I think I skipped membership so membership who are main members of a political party so as a member of course you come for political meetings and then you support you sympathize all of them join together and vote that is a member but you're not holding an executive position then the next level is executives political parties in ghana there are different hierarchies of executive positions we have the branch level uh, which is mostly aligned to polling stations and then from there we have the constituency levels in ghana our parliament is represented or is being demarcated into territories called constituencies of which these territories elect a representative to parliament so that territory constituency they have a full set of executives who are called constituency executives and they are in charge of affairs within that constituency working with 
the member of parliament or, or the parliamentary candidate. The next level is regional executives. So our administrative territories or divisions in Kenya, they are called counties. In Nigeria, they are called states. But in Ghana, we call them regions. So we have a regional level of executives. And they also foresee uh, the functionality of the party within the region. And the topmost is national. The national executives, they are the top management of that political party. And the last one is government officials. So those are people who, uh, on the tickets of that political party, they have been appointed to an office in government or elected to an office in government based on the tickets of that political party. They are equally seen as members of that party. Yeah, so these are the levels of membership. So for you to either be just a mayor voter or a mayor member or become a government official of a political party, you obviously need to know their ideologies and their rules. You need to know what that political party does. I've prepared a bit of, um, should I say, profiling for some of the notable political parties that we have in Ghana. Um, you can see one flag here on your screen. That is, um, this particular political party is the one in government as of now, 2024, the new patriotic party. So the new patriotic party, their former leader, who is currently the president of the republic, is Nana Adodan Kwakufado. And their 2024 presidential candidate is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is currently the vice president, who has won the presidential uh, candidacy for this particular party. So he will be the one to be uh, the presidential nominee or candidate for the new patriotic party. It was also, it was founded in the year 1922. Their ideology is center right, liberal conservatism, and the advocates for free markets, private sector driven group, and individual liberties. What is their track record? Under President Kufo, who served from the year 2020 to 2028, the MPP introduced the NHIS free maternal care and capitation grant. And under the current president, the MPP launched their flagship free SHS program, one district, one factory, and all the one one down, you know, this 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 uh, policies. You know them very well. Should we recite them? Uh, I, I believe that would be relevant. They have economic initiatives such as planting for food and jobs, digitization of services, the Ghana card, and so on, and energy sector reforms. And they have also done infrastructure improvements, including the Agenda 111, as they have currently. What are some of their key manifesto points? Continuity of economic growth in seeking to renew their mandate for the next four years. Job creation, education, and then all others. So for people who know this political party very well, they have their reservations and they have their praises that they'll give. But I'm not the one to comment on that. I believe in our subsequent discussions, we could talk about that. But in doing this particular presentation, it's expected that I be neutral. So I cannot give an opinion on their performance. That is left to you. But for you to join this party, you should understand and know what they do. You should do your investigation to know whether or not they did well or not. What are the things that they do? Do their government officials perform well in power? What is the disciplinary action issued to um, their members in the case that they do something wrong? How do they handle their parliamentary seats? How do they run their elections? These track records are very important in choosing whether or not to join this party. Let's go to the main opposition party currently, which is the National Democratic Congress. And I'm sure you also know this party very well. It has also served in government before, from the year 1992 
to 2000 to 999 or 2000 2008 to 2016 they served in power during that time so their former leader was professor john evans atamos who actually died in office and the then vice president john ramani mahama assumed the role of president and he also contested again he is currently the attorney 24 presidential candidate okay this party was also founded in 1992 by flight leader nigerian rollins their ideology is center left social democracy advocates for state intervention in the economy social welfare programs and equitable wealth distribution what are some of the track records of the ndc the ndc is known for large infrastructure projects such as roads schools hospitals and energy projects some key accomplishments include the building of the atuabo gas processing plant the expansion of the rich hospital the construction of multiple community day schools the mahama administration launch okay this e levy i'm sorry this is not accurate um the e levy was not launched by the ndc it was launched by the mpp for the records so the ndc also has a lot of records as well and then what are their manifesto points for these 2024 elections the big push with this an infrastructure agenda a 10 billion infrastructure drive to create jobs and improve the economy education is the plan to review and make the free shs policy more inclusive and focus on quality rather than quantity youth employment of course they want to bring new initiatives to tackle the unemployment crisis within the republic and support entrepreneurs when it comes to health they have the plan to expand the universal health care access and upgrade hospitals and health facilities and when it comes to energy they plan to address the energy sector debt reduce electricity tariff and promote renewable energy as a main opposition party of course they want to counter what the current party in government is doing and change some of the things so obviously as an opposition party you know how their policies will be like so this is the ndc those of you who know the NDC as well, you have your reservations and your praises. And perhaps during the discussion, we could talk about it and have a consensus on the performance of both parties. As I stated, the Republic of Ghana is basically a de facto two-party system, uh, a de facto two-party system. But it does not mean we should ignore the other minor parties. Let's look at them. Convention People's Party, their former leader was Dr. Park Wesindo. Uh, this is their flag, CPP. Their former leader was Dr. Park Wesindo, who later left that party and formed PPP, of which he couldn't also win, unfortunately. In this current election, their current presidential candidate is Nana Akosua from Poma Sapong, Puma Puma. This party was founded in the 19th. 49 by Dr. Kran Kumar, who was the first prime minister of this republic. Their ideologies, basically pan Africanism, socialism, and advocates for self reliance, African unity, and state led industrialization. Also, their track record under the leadership of Dr. Kran Kumar, Ghana gained its independence in 1957 and they gained their republican status in 1960. some of their major policies included industrialization through state-owned enterprises large-scale infrastructure projects the possible dam Tema harbor and numerous practices so this cpp that you are seeing here although it is no more a major party when they were in power they actually did a lot a lot for the fact that Nkrumah led them, Nkrumah being an icon, that respect has to be given to him. Nkrumah has done a lot. So for this particular party, I'm sharing my reservations 
on their performance. Let's cover uh, the new emerging parties that you are hearing about. The butterfly movement, as you know, movement for change. And as you see the butterfly, you already know the candidate for this particular party. Former Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan John Quadro, Chairman Teng, he formed this particular party in 2023 after he left the current party in government for whatsoever reason to form this particular party. And then the other, which is of attention to the Gen Z's this time around, is the New Force Movement founded by Nana Kwame Bediaku this particular year. So this is just a rundown of some of the political parties. And for you to choose any of them, it depends on what you have heard about them. It basically depends on what you have heard about them. Just for the avoidance of doubt, allow me to just take you through the presidential ballot paper. So for this particular 2024 presidential elections, number one on the ballot paper is the current vice president who is leading the party in government. It is the new patriotic party. Mahmoud Baumia is number one on the ballot paper. Then we have number two on the ballot paper, Daniel Augustus Latte, who is GCPP, Great Consolidated Popular Party. Then number three is our infamous Equia Donko, Ghana Freedom Party. I hope you have your reservations on that. Uh, I have. She keeps on trying every time. Um, I think she has a lot of money she wants to waste. But well, that's still my opinion. Then we have Christian Kwabena Andrews, number four. Ghana Union Movement. I think it's a, it's a man of God. So I think he counted on the membership of his church, hoping that he could win the elections. But unfortunately, it is not so. We have Kofi Akpalo, Akpalo, Liberal Party of Ghana, number five on the ballot paper. Number six is Mohamed Frimpon of the National Democratic Party. This was a party formed by the former first lady who was part of the NDC. And now she's no more the presidential candidate, unfortunately. Seven. CPP, we have Nana Fosua Primpoma. And on the eighth is the current um, biggest party in opposition, former president of the Republic, John Dramani Mahama, National Democratic Congress, number eight on the ballot paper. Number nine is Hassan Abdullahi Ayariga, All People's Congress. And then from 10 to 13, as the independent candidates, we have Kofi Quarantine, number 10, George Tum Barima, independent candidate, Nana Kwame Bediako, independent candidate, into bracket, new force movement. And then the last, which is number 13, is Alan John Pado Jermantin, independent candidate, and movements for change. So for those of you here who are still looking at the people to vote for, whether you would end up joining a political party or just be a mere voter, it's important that you know the position of the presidential candidates in this election. One thing that I'll share for you is uh, supposed to be part of my conclusion is that I'm not ending, but I want to state that particular point right now. We need everyone to vote, okay? The poor voter turnout is back. We as youth, we expect the elderly to do something. However, when it is time for you to choose them, you are sitting down in the house, you don't have any intentions of going to vote for whatsoever reasons. I think one of the, uh, I think the first person who spoke encourage you to vote and it's important all of you vote 
regardless of your reservations, just go and vote and choose a party that you believe in, whether it is the candidates that you believe in or the party. Ensure you exercise your franchise and vote. Because if you fail to do so, you don't have any right to question whichever party that is in power. It's like you have been given an opportunity to choose a car and you are telling us you don't know, you don't like cars, so you are just not interested. Now, they are sharing cars elsewhere and they are telling you that it is only people who vote that can enjoy. So on what premise are you going to make claims that I voted for you? Therefore, I should have a benefit of this. You don't have any premise. You have a mandate as a citizen to vote in this election. As an electorate in this election, you must vote and exercise your franchise in choosing the leadership of this particular country. In this election, there will be two main ballot papers, presidential ballot papers and parliamentary ballot papers. In every constituency, there are a list of candidates on different party tickets to represent you in a constituency, and you need to pick one particular person. If you don't know who to pick, please, you just need to know, because it is also sad that we have ballot papers as the third person being voted for in ranking the number of votes being acquired. The rejected ballot papers are taking the third in line. It's very sad. I that confused that up to now, you don't know who to vote for that, you go and spoil your votes. No, Gen Z, Gen Z, Gen Z, Gen Z. You shouldn't be confused about this. You need to pick one person and do not spoil the ballot paper. So please, I want to put that forth to you. Now, to help you to choose, let's continue the presentation. I've explained to you the two main political parties and then the others. I'm just going to classify them as the others. You need to see which of them aligns with your interests as a person. As a person, you have principles that guide you and you have an interest. You expect that this be done and that be done. Which political party promises that? If you want to choose a political party, you should choose one that aligns with your interest as a youth. If the party does not align, then on what basis are you voting? It could be any of this. But the primary reason in choosing a political party to vote for should be whether or not they align with your interests as a person. The second is their commitment to national development. We have parties that when they are given power, they misuse power. Their track record is very bad. They worsen our situation. The economic situation becomes so bad that even the economy cannot sustain again. They are just incompetent that they can't do the simple work we have given to them. And such a party should not be in power because basically they have lost focus. And you as a youth calling for development of this country, you still go and choose parties that have failed in doing the one thing they have been elected to do, to develop this country. I'm calling on you to vote for parties that would ensure national development. The third reason or criteria for you to choose a political party is their stance for peace and stability. It's a very important point because a party that encourages violence is not a party that is good for us. When the country is not safe, you cannot sit down here and listen to this webinar. When we have war and political instability in the country, you will not be here listening to this particular webinar. So it's important that the party that you should vote for to stand for peace and stability. And the last point is their track record of transparency and governance. When parties come into power, it's important that they account for their stewardship. And of course, for the promises that they have made, they should account to us the ones they could do, the ones they could not do. If their developmental agenda was hindered by a particular thing, they should state it for us to know. When you promise us bread and butter and you get there and you are not able to deliver, we should know why. That is basically accountability. Transparency in their affairs. The party says they are going to do this. Yes, they are doing something different. They don't tell you why. They'll tell you what. We don't care about you. That party basically literally does not care about you. They are not being transparent in their affairs. They are full of corruption. 
And good governance is also one. Promotion of rule of law. Does the party promote rule of law? Will they abide by the rules governing this particular country? We have a constitution, the 1992 constitution, and the numerous acts that have been passed by parliaments of the Republic of Ghana. Does these parties yield to all these laws guiding us? Or they debunk the law, they don't mind it, and then they are just going by whatever they want? These are issues that you should take into consideration in choosing a political party. And I call on you to look at these four points and numerous. I also spoke about the kind of personalities that are in the party or leading the party. Some of the personalities have questionable integrity. And such people, if they are poor records, when you give them the opportunity to continue, they will destroy the country. So the people leading the party as well should also be taken into consideration in choosing the party you want to affiliate with or vote for. So you should take into consideration the personalities leading that particular party. The first speaker spoke about um, the fact that you should not break the law. It's important. And in also doing so, ensure that you avoid political polarization and tribalism. Okay, Voting on ethnicity and regional or geographical location is not something we encourage because it hinders national unity. We are one country. So if a political party is just focused on the fact that a particular region is their focus, or a particular tribe or religion is their focus, they are basically destroying national unity. And we don't like that. It is not encouraged because these things can affect the peace and stability we have in the country. Nigeria has experienced this particular issue where the northerners come around and then they are trying to do their things. The southerners get so pissed off and then it could lead to a lot of encounters. We don't want that. So a political party that should be doing that is not the best for you. If you are part of one, try to rethink whether or not it is worth it being in that particular party. You need to focus on policies, okay? The policies that they have as well should be our focus. The fact checking and debunking. You see, when it comes to politics, we have something called propaganda. Propaganda simply is telling the people what they want to hear, not what you can do. Political parties are fond of doing that. You see, this particular um, generation that we are in, we are obsessed with some particular staffs. So when the party knows that this is what this group of people want, they come and tell you all the sweet words and water your mouths. But the fact is that, are they going to do that? Is that even possible? Then it comes to the fact checking. It is incumbent on you as a member of a political party or someone who wants to vote for a party to fact check all the things that they are saying to ensure that you can spare and take away the misinformation or propaganda that they put off. Because some of the information that they state, it is not possible, it is not realistic, but they come and tell you just to win your vote. So parties that do that, you should be careful of them. We want realistic, you see, unfortunately, we are, they are being forced to do that because when they tell you the hard truth, you will not vote for them. You see, one of the things that parties do is that when they come into power, they have to bring in some new taxes. But when they tell you that vote for me so that I'll tax you, are you sure you are going to vote for them? Obviously not. You will not vote. Bring such realistic policies. That is why they, are, they end up doing propaganda. But some of the propagandists are just not realistic enough. So you seeking to vote for a political party or be part should just ensure that you can, you can shift the information that they share and take away the realistic ones and separate them from the unrealistic ones. To check this is basically to check, use your phone, you check the sources of their information, 
you, you do referencing, you question, you investigate, you ask people to seek information whether or not this is possible. You can even use your intellect, your IQ. Is it realistic? Is it rational? It's what they are saying. Is it rational at this particular point in time? You don't have the capacity. You can do all these fact checks. And just as the second speaker stated, social media has a role in fact checking. So you should use social media or the internet to advantage. It is imperative that we, the youth, should be peace advocates. As I stated, if there is no peace, you will not be listening to me here. So we, the youth, should be peace advocates. What we are doing right now is basically the promotion of peace for this election, and I applaud that. To the CEO, I say thank you for holding this particular webinar. We should be peace advocates for this election. Okay? Let us all go and vote in this election. All of us should participate and vote. There should be high voter turnout, and all of us should vote for parties and people we know can do the job. Our future is being put into their hands for the next four years. So when you go there and you vote for the wrong reasons or because of money that they'll give to you, I'll talk about monetization of parties or elections before our close. Then basically you are sacrificing your that independency for just a token, whether it is money that is being given or it is a gift. It shouldn't be so. In most cases, you'll be advised not to reject them. Because after all, it is secret balloting. When you go into the ballot box, when you go into the screen, the voting screen, it is just you alone. Whosoever you vote for is no one. So in most cases, you have been encouraged to take the gifts. But that as well is deceptive. Because when you take the gift, you have implied that you are going to vote for them. So why should you even take the gifts? And as young leaders, after the election or after you vote, you should monitor the election, just as the first speaker stated. When you know someone is not doing right, you can inform the CSOs that will be there for them to contact the authorities. In the case that it is the Electoral Commission themselves that is uh, becoming the perpetrator to this deed, how are you going to report me to myself? You can't report me to myself, right? So you need someone to intervene. So we need to be watchdogs in this particular election so that the election can be fair and transparent. You need to make your vote count. As I stated, when you go, you vote for a presidential candidate and a parliamentary candidate. Avoid spoiling the ballot. Voting is very simple, OK? We need you need to make your votes count. So please go and vote, regardless of whatsoever gifts that they will give you, whether money. Just ensure when you get to the voting screen, you pick the right person that can rule the country for the next four years. We do not encourage voter apathy. Please do not do that. Going to other people to sabotage their voting, it could be by intimidating them it could be by uh should i say stealing the ballot box it could be by basically destroying their route to the elections it could be by distorting the entire electoral process you shouldn't do that when you engage in any electoral malpractice you can be jailed and the first speaker spoke about that the law is not going to be friendly with you when they take you to court, you'll be jailed. So let us avoid participating in electoral more practices. To cover the last point is political monetization or monetization of elections. Even in our student elections, we have monetization over there. When an SRC presidential candidate comes to you that you should vote for me for this and that, and you're asking them to buy you food, buy you credit, buy you this and that, you are contributing to the destruction of this election. In hot case, you know that people are supposed to what? Put themselves forth for the most competent to be elected. But when you are demanding, you are creating the opportunity for an idiot to come and give you money and tell you to vote for me. 
who has no plans for development. This is the implication of monetization of our elections. Another issue that we suffer from monetization is that competent people who do not have these financial resources to stand are not able to contest, and only the rich are able to. Are you aware of the amount of money political parties or even candidates need to contest to win and become their uh, ticket bearers or to be on a ballot paper on the tickets of a political party? Currently, for you to contest for a parliamentary primaries in either of the NDC or MPP, not less than 100,000, 100,000 Ghana cities is the minimum amount you need to survive in a primary. If you have 1 million, then obviously you're just going to waste money or share money. But unfortunately, this time around, the trend is changing. People come, they think you can just come and share money and win elections. In 2023, the primaries held by the NDC and the MPP, a lot of candidates, they lost their election because they had no, they had they knew nothing about the job. They just came with money and thought when they give money to the people, they vote for them. They lost. We are not encouraging monetization. So this is what we suffer from monetization of elections. Incompetent people who have money will come and seek for your votes, whilst the competent people are not able to contest due to what? The money needed to survive in the election. And it is very poor. I don't think it should be so. I'm even shocked that NASPA elections, NASPA, not even SRC, NASPA, you need to spend 10,000 in the national elections to survive. 10,000 Ghana cities. How much does the national service personnel earns in order to make 10,000 cities? Hello. Dad, your dad and mom sends you money to, to survive in school, or you are a hustler. How are you going to make 5,000 to survive in an SRC election? It is because of the monetization. The monetization is very bad. And I, I don't encourage monetization of elections. It should not be so. We want competent people to lead us. And fighting monetization has to be a fight by all of us. So the advice that people will give to you is that when they come with their gifts and monies, when you reject it, that's okay. If you take it, the advice I have for you is that still vote for the competent people and not because of the gifts or monies they'll give to you. Because whatever gifts or money they'll give to you will finish in December. That December now, in fact, let me say by 10th December, the money will finish. The item by January, it will disappear. But your vote is going to last for the next four years. In order to kill monetization, we as electorates need to stop calling for gifts or monies before we cast votes for people. When the people come and they tell you of their plans, ask them questions and see how relevant it is to solving your problem. But do not make demands for monies before you vote for them. Monetization is not something you encourage. So on this basis, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm grateful. Thank you so much.